Thought it was safe to turn away from your screen. Think again. Another action-packed foursome in the lineup. Now Seth Moniz and Philippe Toledo in the priority heat with 18 minutes to go. And Zhao Chianca comes up against John John Florence. This is a matchup we've all been waiting for for the better part of the last 30 minutes when we've been just <laughs> ripping through heats. Chris Cote here with Rosie Hodge. Rosie, you've been in and around the zone. We're seeing thrilling victories, uh, the agony of defeat and injuries. I mean, this is one of the wildest days of professional surfing I've seen in a decade. It's a full gauntlet, Chris. Right now we're seeing so many mixed emotions. Looking over our shoulder at these huge walls of water coming through, feathering at Second Reef. It's been insane. I mean, I think this is one of the best days at Pipe that I've ever watched and, and been a part of. So, um, yeah, feeling very fortunate to get to sit front and center and watch these heats unfold. Yeah, and sometimes, you know, we say that and, you know, there, there's opinions out there, but there's no, uh, there's no arguing against that when guys like Kelly Slater, John John, et cetera, are saying this is the best ever. Well, 16.50 to go for Moniz and Toledo. You see the beautiful conditions we still have. As we look towards the horizon, yep, more sets coming in. And one story that uh, we're definitely gonna hit on in the post show, I'm sure, is the upsets we've seen today. Italo Ferreira out. Jack Robinson out. Two favorites to win this contest out of contention. So uh, like I said, a wild and woolly day here at Pipeline and it will continue to be just like that as we see Felipe Toledo. That way have had more spit than two. Yeah, that was it, crazy. Well, I think, you know, as the, this building swell comes through, there is just so much force behind it. Even though the wave height isn't always there, that water pushing through is surging. Look at that, wow. You can hear it, you can feel it. You can feel it here on the scaffolding when it breaks, that vibration. Oh, we can feel it up here. I can't imagine what Strider Wasilewski is feeling right there next to the impact zone. <laughs> yeah, you can say I'm feeling it out here. I mean, I, you know, it, it's, you can literally feel the vibration of the energy and everything that's hitting out here, but just get to catch up with this next heat. John John right in a 6'6" and Joao riding a 6-4. So these guys are definitely stepping up. Oh, no, I gotta get out of here. Oh gosh, look out. You know, you don't see uh, NFL sideline reporters have to paddle for their lives to get out of the way of a monster like that. Strider Wasilewski, thank you for your commitment to journalism, literally putting yourself in the danger zone for our information and entertainment. 15-15 to go, Toledo. Moniz, that's last score from Toledo. It's a three for now. Though even though there are hundreds of waves coming in, you know, with each and every other heat, uh, now it's uh, it's kind of reaching that threshold to where these surfers have to be careful because some of these waves are just too big. The pipe reef just can't handle the size, and that tells me that uh, things are escalating out there. It is, and I think that positioning is going to be so key. Someone like John John, he knows this reef so well. I mean, you've really got to pick your timing to kind of throw yourself in the right place to find a little nugget between these bigger rogue sets. Well, if anyone's going to find him, it's, it was John John Florence. And by little, I mean absolutely monstrous. For John John, that's a, that's a little wave. That's a warm up. John John on that trusty Pizel blade. They have been in the shaping room. If they're not in the water, they're in the shaping room or in one of the yards talking design. And you think a lot of technology and and uh, skill goes into designing an F1 race car. These surfboards, I mean, millimeters could be the ultimate difference between a, a good board and a great board. So it's, uh, it's always fun to hone in on the boards these surfers are riding. I mean, most of us would never have the need for a 6'6 pipe gun, but they're sure fun to look at. They're so fun to look at it. And just uh, noticing John John's board from earlier today while I was interviewing him, he was still on a bit of lumber. So I think, you know, he probably went back and he's maybe even on something a bit bigger, I don't know, maybe warmed up on the board that he was gonna surf throughout the day. But these guys want the bigger waves. He's just gonna assess the equipment right now. Yeah, this uh, th these boards are, are nothing compared, or nothing to the power that Pipeline has. I mean, your board will snap in an instant if uh, caught head on by one of these waves. 13.15 to go. 
in the Toledo Moniz matchup. That is the priority heat. The Black Heat, John John Florence and Zhao Chianka, they have secondary priority. Within that contest, you have Zhao with priority. Here goes John John on a little inside runner. And remember when we say little inside runner, we're just talking about in terms of what we've seen so far today. You know, the scale we're looking at, that was the biggest wave that most of us would see at our local break, uh, maybe once every 10 years. But out here at Pipeline, that's a, that's a medium to small sized wave from well, what we're seeing. Well, now it gets a bit dangerous with the, the way that John took off on that medium sized wave and where it's positioned him, broken board for John. Sorry, I, I guess I manifested that. I'm sorry, Pizel, one more board bites the dust. How quick are the Hawaiian Water Patrol, though? They are so on it. They almost foreshadow what's going to happen. They so just finger on the pulse the whole time. These guys have to feel just a little bit more safe having those guys on the lineup. Yeah, I think a lot of these boards, actually, there, there is a, 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 a limit, right? You don't want the board to be so indestructible that it doesn't break, because that's when you could really you know, cause bodily harm. So they, they, have, they are built you know, to withstand a certain amount of pressure. John John Florence has his backup board. He's ready to get back out there. All of the surfers in this contest, male or female, will have at least six boards on the beach because as you saw right there, even the best of the best will bust through their equipment and really just uh, nothing you can do there. He pulled in, he was right in the right spot. Boom, done, broken. Yeah, no, uh, and those are, that's actually different different equipment to what he was riding earlier today. He had clear rails on the board in his foot in that first round heat that we saw this morning. So yeah, he must have picked up a bit of lumber. Now he's on a backup board. So definitely going to have a couple of those boards on the beach. Well, we've got Seth and Felipe with time winding down really uh, this is kind of a vexing set of numbers here. Three and a point five for Felipe. That's enough to have him in the lead over a pipeline specialist, Seth Moniz, who's just sitting on a one, two, three, and a one. Rosie, what does that tell you in terms of uh, quality in waves? There's probably good quality waves. It's just the fact of making the wave at the moment. And I was just noticing how far along the beach uh, John John had been pushed towards Aokai Beach Park. So Felipe waiting patiently. That gives us a chance to catch back up with Strider Wasilewski, who has been studying this lineup since dawn. Strider, what kind of waves are these surfers going to be looking for for the remainder of the afternoon? Well, yeah, I want to touch on, on wave selection right now and what we were seeing earlier and what we're seeing now. So earlier, what looked like a good wave, you know, had a nice little hook on the end. You wanted that wave that had something down on the bowl so you could backdoor come through and fly out. Right now, there's so much volume with these swells rolling in. There's so much water behind them that the wave that you would look at and think, oh, this wave doesn't have that much of a, a hook on it. Those are the ones you want right now because those are the ones that are actually going to let you out on the end. Uh, I talked to Seth while he was paddling back out. He's like, wow, that wave was so much different. I thought I was going to make it and the wave just hooked and there was so much volume that it just sucked off the reef and closed out on them in the barrel. So and they're readjusting uh, what is a good wave and what it looks like. And right now you can see those big ones. You saw John taking those inside nuggets, but they have too much wall on it. So he's going to probably adjust and just look for that much bigger open co corner with a big shoulder and those waves are actually going to pipe off and there's so much girth behind them you see that giant spit every time it's amazing strider we saw john break his board and have to do a quick turnaround where is he in the lineup how long has it taken him to uh, get here. back he's right here check him out you, you get the water camera on him you can see him he's already back out here so that was no time hawaiian water patrol right on him back out in the lineup that was probably what two minutes if that, I mean, that, that was pretty that was amazing. Pretty, I mean, he was getting swept way down. You could tell how hard he was scratching just to get out of that rip. It does run like a river along that inside section. It can push you way down. But John, obviously, pretty used to that conveyor belt. He's back out in the lineup and finding his position. You know, I always like to see uh, Gromit get the ultimate souvenir. Busted John John Florence board, priceless. And John, just like that, finds a nugget. Goes to the back door, racing down the line, over and out. But that was, I mean, there was three surfers just sitting there and he broke his board, came to the beach, said hi to some friends, grabbed another board, got back out there, got away before anybody even knew what happened. Oh, yeah, you almost wonder if that was a repositioning uh, kind of maneuver from John. 
All right, three surfers scratching for it with priority. It's Seth Moniz. Nice condensed pipe barrel that grew down the line. A little bonus section there. So Seth Moniz trying to wipe the slate clean. Just sitting on one, two, three, and a one. Toledo pedals over that one. I like that idea for Seth because look, he's right back out there and uh, no worries about getting caught inside. He's put himself in a good position. Like And like Strada said, just readjust those expectations. After that three point ride that he got, didn't make it out. You want to kind of make those subtle adjustments. Actually, sorry, uh, Seth only got a couple of one point rides in his scoreline. So he is looking at the moment to, to up the ante. Felipe Toledo, he doesn't have much in his scoreline either. So he's going to take the lead now, Seth Moniz. So seven and a half to go. Waiting for the score to drop for Seth Moniz. I've mentioned the artist behind the look and feel of the Billabong Pro pipeline. Kamea Hadar. His murals can be found all over the island, including uh, looked like a 400 foot tall Carissa Moore Olympic mural that is just a stunner in downtown Honolulu. Uh, you can also uh, check out the board shorts, the posters, the shirts. I mean, if you can't be here, you might as well pretend that you were here wearing your Billabong Pro Pipeline shirt. Why not? Get all the memorabilia. I mean, this has been such an amazing year so far already. We've had three days run of competition, two of them. <laughs> it feels like it's been a whole season. Insane. That was a cool shot right there as we see high and tight. Seth? Seth again, just right there in the pocket, cannot find the exit. Well, his last score came through a 367, so he's completely flipped the script. On paper, these numbers are low, but they do carry a lot of weight in terms of impact. A 367 on a day like today, it's kind of counterintuitive, but at the same time, it's gnarly out there for different reasons than earlier this morning. Now it's about survival almost. I know, it does feel like that in a way. You've got to just have your wits about you at the moment, just because there's so many factors playing into what the lineup's doing. And, and identifying a way that you can get the risk reward. But a lot of the times, you know, Seth playing it so smart, just getting a complete ride, that's a, a reward enough. Five and a half for Moniz and Toledo. Cat and mouse in this lineup now, and the cat, well, it's a tiger. Pipeline showing its teeth. And it's fitting because this is the year of the tiger. And uh, I think that's a, a really fitting start to uh, what we've seen so far. It has been animalistic out here at Pipeline and Backdoor. Yeah, happy Lunar New Year. Thank you so much. Couple little scores coming through for John John Florence, a 1.5 and a 0.93. I can all but guarantee you that those numbers will be changed within the next five to 10 minutes. If anybody can decode this confusing lineup right now, it's John John Florence and of course Seth Moniz who has so much time in the lineup out there. Look at the family on hand. Mom, Tammy right in front there, trying to ease the nerves. Tony doing Lind the shuffle. Lindy Irons, remember this event, the Billabong Pro Pipeline in memory of Andy Irons. Yeah, usually if that group was all together, it would be a fun party, luau kind of vibe. Right now, it is all business. Yeah, it looks like everyone's just holding their breath and pacing and just willing a couple waves Seth's way. Yeah, you can just, you can feel it with that kind of new swell energy hitting the lineup. Things have uh, turned a little bit more serious. It's. It's interesting to think of day one, everybody coming in, non-elimination rounds going, that was just the most fun I've ever had on a surfboard. And then you get to today and you've had injuries, you've had high ranked surfers out, knocked out of competition. I think this has really been a, a awakening for everybody, rookies and veterans alike. Anything is possible at Pipeline, anything is possible on the championship tour. I mean, there is, there is no, uh, there is no crystal ball to foresee the future here. It has been changing by the minute. And I think it's also starting to sink in. There's a mid-year cut this season. So, you know, you talk about the big names that we've lost, the Jack Robinsons, um, 
you know, we've seen a lot of people benched at this event already, and they're going to have to start thinking about requalification. You get one throwaway after five events, Margaret River, top 22, carry on. The train keeps moving, Chris, and uh, yeah, the rest of the competitors that are off the tour have to go back onto the Challenger Series. You're making me nervous. Griffin Colapinto, he's out of the event. Come on. Didn't see that coming. Wow. Did you, do you see this coming? This is really scary. <laughs> <laughs> this is really happening right here. At Second reef bomb coming through. Seth Moniz catches the first wave of the set. High and tight, clean exit. Nicely done, pulls out of the back to see a monster on the outside. The horizon goes black. Moniz can't love what they're seeing here. Seth dodges that wave just on the shoulder. Let's go to Strider in the lineup. Here we go, we got a paddle. Drop it in, big frost burger, Joao. There's a lot of water moving. These guys looking at the waves, everybody out of position for that big set. And it was, uh, I mean, the, the second wave of that was just incredible. Obviously, Seth's wave looked really nice. And then now everything moves over into the channel and there's big lumps and it just kind of is going to get unruly and you'll start to see everybody just kind of reposition and hope for the lineup to calm back down. Strata, I want to ask you, using your own arm strength to propel you into something that has such a force, tell us about that feeling. Well, you know what, it's, it's one of those things that mentally you have to be able to win that war because physically it is possible, I guess anything's possible in the world, but you have to get through it mentally and then to put yourself in the position. When I mean, you see one of these waves come at you, right, you got a 20, 25 foot wall of water coming at you and it's just got nothing but a city block girth, you really have to think about that. And then you turn around and you have to paddle and get underneath it to where gravity takes over and you start to fall into it and your paddle power is just enough to get you over the edge. I like to use a bigger board because I like to catch it from outside and you know avoid that flying embers drop of the day. <laughs> I, don't, I like to glide it and just kind of get my line and set it and go through it. But these guys, it's just next level watching them, where they take off that, where they're positioning, underneath the hook, beautiful, technical, best surfers in the world, best waves in the world. It's all happening out here at Pipeline. Strider, we just saw Seth make a really smart decision and under fire for sure. He had to know there was four waves behind the wave that he paddled for. As we're watching the wave that he got, a gem in a, a sea of just madness. What yeah. did that look like from the channel? I mean, it was pure. It had a nice cylinder. It was open. It spit, and it had a big shoulder, and that's what you want. And he actually identified that paddling back out with me. It was a really big set coming, so I'm gonna start paddling. But you know, one more note: do the math, do your research, sit on the beach, watch those sets coming in. Know that right after that first wave, it's gonna get ugly. So you better catch one. Stop talking and start paddling, Strider. <laughs> so wicked. Nervous. This way comes. It is escalating all around us right now. Another eight wave set pulsing through, hitting that second reef. These surfers look tiny out there in the lineup and time's winding down for Moniz and Toledo. And Seth Moniz gets the victory just like that. The last wave he caught comes into play. The 4-3-3 looms large in his score line. He's moving through. Watch out, John John Florence. Screenshot moment here. There's the capture. There's the poster for your wall. Ugh. Iconic. Insane. Iconic. Classic. Come right? on. It was dark inside that barrel. <laughs> and more to come. Dropping from the sky. Jiao Chianka answering back. Oh, that was awkward. You just put your board in hell. Yeah, that and your scary. body. <laughs> the body. The body was in the air, the board was in the impact zone. Look it like, is all going crazy right now. Like it was pole vaulting over the lip. <laughs> I, it, it's hard to stay seated. As we look at the war zone that is pipeline. Oh, John John just using his entire frame to slow down, put the brakes on. Look at the way that that white water is exploding above the wave. So much velocity. Insane. He goes over that little ledge right there, tucks into that dark cavern. Just so well done. And, you know, just to manage his speed in that, because that wave is just trying to push you out into the shoulder and just maintaining his composure. Love the way that he pulls under this hood, though. He knows this little ledging section is coming. He reads it so well. That wave is thick. It's heavy. The thing is, it, it, it's like a, a whip crack hitting the water right in front of him. 
Couldn't have said it better myself. That's the reaction. So the Moniz camp cheering for Seth with a buzzer beater finish. And again, one of our highest ranked surfers in this event is out. We lose Felipe Toledo. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a big loss for, you know, looking at the roster finishing number two in the world. But Seth Moniz being a local here and just the momentum that he's had throughout the rounds, not really surprised. No, no surprise uh, here. Seth Moniz is that good. And with that amount of support on the beach, He's going to go deep into this contest, and we could see quarterfinals very soon. And for our fans watching in Brazil, future coverage of the quarterfinals will continue exclusively on WorldSurfLeague.com and Sport TV. And so when the Billabong Pipeline, when the Billabong Pro Pipeline is on next, head over to WorldSurfLeague.com, Sport TV for uninterrupted coverage for more waves and scores like this. The show is far from over in John John Florence. Just got one of the highest single wave scores of the entire event. A flawless, perfect pipeline beauty. And the crowd goes wild when the score is read over the loudspeaker. I mean, this is a, a day of days. It's insane. And who has the best wave? That was Kelly's, right? Was that a non eight? It's, uh, the nines are starting to add up. The nines you know, are starting it's not to as pile easy in. as it was before. No, it's starting to pile up for sure. And I think John, I mean, what a special moment for him. He's obviously coming in as defending champion to this event, locking into that same mojo. You know, and, and even John John Florence, who is, uh, for, for, all, for many reasons, Superman and superhuman, he no doubt watched what transpired in previous heats where surfers that were basically meant to win and meant to get out of these heats have gone down. So he knows anything's possible. He is not taking Jiao Chianka lightly, even though he's a rookie. Uh, John knows, I mean, he's been in enough events, especially here at Pipe, to be able to put together a technical heat and get the best barrels of the day. And, just make a magic, magic moments with John Don Florence oh, will continue. back to back waves. He's applying the pressure to Jao, but Jao, I'm not counting him out because earlier today he took out Jack Robinson. He's nuts out of pipeline, so. But John it seems like he's starting to get into that comfortable, happy place. You're not counting him out, but after that wave, <laughs> how's your confidence <laughs> level of Jao Chong making this heat? Yeah, well, like I said, I'm. I've seen John, I mean, think about the final that he had with Jeremy Flores. You would say, hey, it's in the bag for him. So I don't want to say True. anything or do anything that's going to kind of mess with, with <laughs> no any kind of energy. Curse. Yeah, and I just want to see this heat play out the way it's meant to. So John locking into this wave straight after locking in a huge nine point ride, sneaks out under that doggy door, the guillotine managed to escape it. So talk about wave selection at the moment. John John has had pretty much the best two rides that we've seen in the last three or four heats. Well, John John Florence is turning it on at the right time, adding drama, flair for danger on this wave. That exit was so critical, not just for a score, but for life and limb. Amazing stuff there from John John Florence. And the hoots and hollers rising up for this wave. It is Jao Chianka. Where'd he go? He's out. Jao Chianka. You were right, Rosie. Don't that count him out. That is why I said I am not counting this guy out. I'm going to let this one play out because that is that going to be our first 10? I don't know. How does that compare to what John did? But he looks pretty happy about it. He's going to pace out to the out, outside. The judges are human beings. They are surf fans. They're surfers. They know when something like that happens that is so dramatic, so exciting. I mean, knocks them out of their seats. It's it's impossible not. He almost lost it right there too. Holds onto the mechanical bull. Gets spat out. That's that's as it's, close that's, to a ten as I've seen. That's as good as you're gonna see. I mean, this water angle is nuts. Watch, he almost loses it. That was oh. that's what Strato was talking about. That mental capacity to hold your line, to hold your composure in these big, thick waves. Right there, when we saw that water angle, I was like, "There's no way." And then you hear the claps on the beach, and you recognize that he has made this wave. 
And that's the thing that, that, that really gets the judges excited is when there's doubt that the surfer is going to make it out. Ever, you know, you, you kind of have to write him off. That right there, he was like, he almost buckled right there. So, did so well to get it back in, and, readjust his line. And the no-hander too, that yeah. adds to the danger element. Yeah. Right there, just a, a salute to Pipeline looking back, going, thank you for not. And right in front of John, his competitor flying out over that wave. Paddle battle. Pretty dramatic. Our surfers resetting themselves in the lineup. They're probably looking at each other going, can you believe what's happening right now? Yeah, and I mean, I'm just looking at the scoreline and what Jiao requires to overcome <laughs> John. He's obviously comboed 17.77. And we're waiting on the score for that last wave. This is nuts. And Jiao got priority too. Just a little, little note. We're going to have to take a minute right here. <laughs> We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back. The action is going through. It's going off and our surfers are rising to the challenge. John John Florence, a 977 and an eight point ride back to back waves. Insane, John John, just a huge score. So technically sound on this wave, so premeditated. Every maneuver on that, on that board, every line. So that was a 977. Now this is Jiao Chonka, a 987. What made this a tenth of a point better, Rosie? I think you know that wave had a bit more, bit more girth a lot more power and ferocity into it. You talked about the way that he was able to let go of his rail for that split second. All of these intricacies are taken note by the judges. Just shocking. I mean, that right there, that was an exchange that will, again, be remembered. Write it down. Where were you when John John and Zhao went wave for wave at pumping pipeline? Zhao Chianka, while a heroic effort, Got him a 987. He's still sitting on a back of a 3.5. So he does need a 790. Not an easy score to get by any means. And while all this is happening, Callum Robson and Kyle Belly hit the water. So we see a little bit of a tussle for this wave. It's going to be Zhao again. He wants more. Looking for a 79. Nicely done there. Score or not, he's going to. He's loving it. No, he's having the so, best day of his yeah, life. And that's how you get it. You get into that energy, you get into that rhythm, and you swap, swap the energy. And like we wanted to see, John, John answers back. Yeah, this is going to be so tricky for John because you're looking at his scoreline. He needs to improve on the eight-point ride, so he's got to find something special to, to increase his lead. The seven-nine that's required by Xiao, that's, you know, a touch under excellence. So... You know, I think uh, right now the dangerous position is for John to improve upon that eight. That's really what he's going to be concentrating on. And priority, I think, is going to become so important at the end of this heat. Big priority battle is happening right now. Strider almost got ran over by John and Zhao trying to get back into the lineup. Dude, it's on 11 out here. I mean, 1,000. I can't believe how intense the competitive energy is between Joao and John John. This is like they're racing for a, a world title at the moment. You know, the head's down, they're paddling super hard. Joao, this kid, he's a real deal. I said it earlier, rookie of the year, that kid is out of control good. For him to drop the bomb on a 6-4, stick to the bottom, almost fall, regain composure, stand up. I mean, that was just incredible what he did. We expect that from John John, and John John is leading this heat. But, like you said, Rosie, do not count this kid out. And the competition between the two of these guys, watching them paddle back out, watching them trying to assert themselves on the peak, seeing the posture, nothing but amazing. And they're doing it into death pits at Pipeline. It's just incredible to watch. Intensity, oh. the key word of the day. Watch out, Strider. Yes, there are more waves coming in. Seven minutes and 58 seconds to go for John Florence and Jao Chianka. This is becoming the matchup of the day. 27.50 for Callum Robson and Coyote Belly, who need to uh, who need to tap into some of the energy that we're seeing from John and Zhao. Uh, both of these guys will go if uh, if if tested. Excited to see Callum Robson just because uh, as a rookie, have not seen much of him out here at Pipeline. You know, Kyle, we've seen him get some results here at Pipe. So what do you think of Callum's chances right now? Keep that rookie streak alive. Yeah, I'm so impressed. I mean, even asking him after his last heat, how are you so comfortable out here? You he said that he came over a couple weeks early. Um, but yeah, he just seems like he is not afraid to just go. I think he's recognized this is his opportunity. Is that rookie on tour? 
I think the best thing about starting the year at Pipe is that you do have to just let go of any kind of, um, I don't know if, if you call it insecurities, but you just have to let go of everything and you know that you have to push yourself over the ledge. Yeah, it just, you, just, you gotta come in all cylinders firing. John Florence has, of course, had a storied career and the stats, the numbers, they back that up. I'm nervous for him right now, Chris, with Xiao having priority of a carry on. Don't be too nervous because look at that career heat win percentage, 65.58, pretty solid. But the number that I'm looking at is career excellent heats. 140 heats have John John Florence in that excellent range where he sits right now. You know, he's nearing the 20 point mark and he's at it again. Where is he? John Florence caught behind the curtain. He goes down. Major sets rolling through right now. Another huge wave on the horizon. And here we go. This is Jao Chianka right in front of John again. Big snap under the lip, still driving, standing tall in a pipe closeout. That was cool. Shades of Michael Aho in Jao Chianka. That was really creative and super fun to watch. It's not going to be the score, obviously, he fell, but just so cool to see a different read. <laughs> But he's not scared, is he? No, and the, I mean, I know that his brother's a big wave charger helmet, but. Strider, Strider, how does Jao Chianka take a licking like that, keep on ticking? Well, he's just got pure adrenaline right now. He's running off a lot of different emotions and feelings. But when that wave came through, I was like, no, that's not the one. And he went, and I was like, oh, loss of priority. I think a mistake for Joao on that one right there. I, you know, there was a lot of wall down the line. We got huge sets rolling through. This lineup is not going to clean up for the next 10 minutes. It's going to be radical. And John just took, uh, you know, the peak and keys to, to control his heat. And I think that was uh, the heat for Joao, in my mind, because taking that wave and losing priority, now he's not going to get his chance, which I think he still needs. Strider, get out of the way. Seriously, oh there is a massive set coming wow. through. And uh, this one is, you just uh, you, you just gotta hope for the best when a wave like this comes through the channel. There you see Strider right in the middle of the screen. He got under that first one. Uh, the amount of bravery that it takes to paddle out and compete on a day like today, this morning, was wow. Look at fairly, you know, friendly pipeline. This is as big and scary and heavy as pipeline gets without closing out. That wave came through third reef steamroller. Steamroll, that's the biggest set that we've seen all day. That's the most water we've seen. We're going to see that misty haze take over the beach of the salty spray. And uh, wow, it's been a day. And, and, it, and it will keep going. Like the sets roll through, we roll on here at the Billabong Pro Pipeline. Chris Cote with Rosie Hodge, you're witnessing another historic day for different reasons than the previous days we've seen. Uh, the highlight reel that you're going to see at the end of today will be absolutely stunning. Speaking of stunning, the turn of events that had Seth Moniz get the win over Felipe Toledo happened in the last seconds of that heat. He is standing by with Laura Enover. Well, Seth Moniz into the quarterfinals. That was a tricky heat. You basically turned it around in seven minutes. Talk us through it. I mean, yeah, it was really tricky. I, I kind of had a feeling it was going to be one of those heats just to grind it out. I had to kind of just find a corner. Like, There's a lot of turbulence out there, so the waves weren't really, like, opening up. But, I mean, as you can see, John and uh, Joel just had incredible waves right there. So it's still pumping, but re really, really tricky. Yeah, and that incoming swell, we know that they can be trickier here in the North Shore, but how important was it for you to just stick to a strategy or well, change up your strategy just to make that heat? Yeah, I was going out there expecting to get like two nines or two eights, um, and then midway through the heat, I was just like, I think, I think if I got two fours, you know, I might make a seat. So yeah, I did that. I got a couple of little barrels, and I'm stoked. Those, those are the heat that I feel like count, you know? Like, you can't have every heat, and can't get bombs in every heat, so I'm stuck to grind it out of that one. Yeah, well, you got a lot left in, left in the tank, and how amazing is it to have all your family down here and, and the whole Moniz crew? Yeah, it's crazy. I feel like my family's just, I mean, it's, my family's huge. You know, I have, like, 10 nieces and nephews and running around the beach everywhere, but um, it's amazing to have all their, their support and to surf at home. For sure. Well, into the quarters. 
the cheer squad will be here bright and early, maybe tomorrow or later this week. And congratulations, Seth. Amazing work. Thanks, Laura. Back to you guys. Thank you, Laura. Congrats, Seth. It's getting diabolical here at Pipeline. The swell is pulsing and continues to increase by the minute. We just saw Zhao Chianka during that interview quietly start to push the gas pedal. This wave was hectic on the takeoff. This was insane, frothy wave, just a shorter barrel, but no, no less hefty than what we've seen. Goes to turns, we know that those are also gonna score, gets a little bit hung up there, but this guy is gonna go down swinging if he doesn't swing all the way through into the quarterfinals. So cool to see someone a rookie on tour just come in and shake things up. Look at this wave, just so much froth out on the face. Don't think that's going to be the 7.9, but it's just so cool to see him playing the game under priority. And he's tenacious. Rolling on that foam, on that foam right there, grabs the rail. Oh my, that is so scary. Double up, ledgy thing. <laughs> oh my Milky face. Oh. You know what I love about Jiao Chianka? After a gnarly barrel like that, just goes right back to work. Two big turns. Yeah, he's such a good surfer. It's just so cool to have this new energy on the tour. 100%. Score does come through. It's a 687, just under the required 790. Jiao Chianka back to the drawing board. 45 seconds to go. Win or lose, Zhao Chianka just gained a ton of respect from his fellow competitors, from the judges, from everybody on the beach, from surf fans all over the world. Give it up to Zhao Chianka. He's down but not out yet. Still has time, 30 seconds on the clock. And uh, Zhao Chianka has arrived. This is so cool. It's really cool to see a rookie just have such a good standing with John Florence. It's not over 17 seconds. I mean, we saw Kelly Slater get his last wave with four seconds remaining. So uh, John's gonna have to close this one out. Obviously he's got priority. Counting down, heat six. And that's gonna be it. Heat of the day, heat of the event. John John Florence against Zhao Chianka. It's John John getting the win. Well, watch out, Callum Robson. All eyes on this young Australian, the youngest surfer on the championship tour. Quick ride there, in the pocket, in the danger zone, Callum Robson. Now it's time to shine. It must be kind of difficult when you when you paddle out in the midst of a heat like we just saw from John John and Zhao, and you're kind of trying to soak up some energy, get some eyeballs on yourself. Well, it's your turn now. Callum Robson, Kyle Belly. Get the priority heat, joined by Sammy Pupo and Jordy Smith. More to come from the Billabong Pro Pipeline. We'll be right back.